Yes, 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 yes. Hello, hello, hello. And thank you so much for joining me. Welcome to the Kathy J Show. I'm Kathy J and you're not. I'm sorry. I just like to say it every once in a while. I think it's so awesome. <laughs> I mean, I get to say it. All right. So anyways, Ode to Saturday Night Live. So thank you everybody that's streaming us on the Denver 7 app. Thank you, thank you, thank you. It's so cool to spend this half hour with you. It means so much to me. My staff and I really work hard to put on a good show for you. So thank you very much. You know, the Kathy J Show is about us. And we all have our own stories to tell. Everybody's got a story. I got a story. You got a story. You got a story. You got a story, right? Now, <laughs> whether or not anyone wants to hear your story, well, that's another story. <laughs> But for real, for real, our stories make us who we are. It's the choices that we make. It's the paths that we go down. It's the friends we decide to keep or the friends we decide to let go of, right? The jobs that we take, woo, I've had a lot of jobs. They definitely molded who I am today. And out of all of those stories, within those stories, you got the choices that you made that made the story happen. Sometimes the paths we follow are long and lead nowhere, but other times those paths turn out to be the perfect opportunity. My guest today has plenty of tales from all the journeys that he's been on. And it's very interesting how the universe kept pushing him towards his purpose. So first and foremost, my guest today is a Denver kid. Woo -hoo! Shout out to the Bellows, Montbello in the house. That's right. Second of all, I've known him for a very long time, well over a decade, and every time this man opens his mouth, I want to hear what he has to say. Whether it's on stage with a mic in his hand, whether it's on a sports radio talk station, or whether he's just hanging out in my kitchen, I always want to know what he has to say. Orrin is an artist, and he once told me that if he wasn't expressing himself, he wasn't living. And you can feel his passion by the way he presents his stories carefully selecting each word to paint a beautiful picture in front of you. Oren is an author. He's a rapper. He's a voice for men. He's a voice for black men, for fathers, for sons. And now he's writing and creating a whole beautiful world for people to escape into. This is where the universe has pushed him. The universe pushed him into a multiverse, or maybe the multiverse pushed him into the universe. We will explain all of that as we get into the conversation with Oren. But either way, his world has merged with the hottest ticket in town, and that's Meow Wolf. And I can't tell you right now how excited I am to share him with you, because when I first met Oren, and I, I mean, I'll say, I, I want to get on the couch with him, but when I first met Oren, the first thing I saw, he was on stage performing with my boyfriend, and I just saw this smile coming out. And then I just heard these lyrics, one after the other. Rap City never sleeps, it's the villains and the creeps. You know, like I just kept, things that he says, people remember. If you have a gift like that, why wouldn't you want to cultivate it? Maybe it's because you're so young, you don't know what your gift is. Maybe it's because of where, how you're growing up, you don't, no one is older enough to help you cultivate what your gift is. So sometimes you got to go through life and keep realizing, the main theme through my life was my gift. We all have gifts, and I want you to maybe listen to what Oren has to say and realize, wow, there is something that's been happening in my life too, and I want to change my life so that I can live my true purpose just like Oren is, just like Kathy J is. So we're going to get to that purpose coming up next. I'll explain it all after the break. After the break, you will meet Oren Lamena coming up. Kathy J. Ramos Law is an official partner of the Kathy J Show. He's a medical doctor and a lawyer. Ramos Law, what makes us different makes us better. <laughs> Welcome back to the Kathy J Show. So today I wanted all of you to meet my friend Oren. He's always been so creative and I'm just so proud of him. His story is just beginning, everybody. Please welcome Oren to the show. Hey! I'm so happy that you're here. Thank you. My it's... forehead thanks you as well. <laughs> yes, yes. So let's <laughs> we'll talk about your forehead in two seconds. <laughs> so you're a Denver kid. I Shout am. out to the Bellows, everybody up there. Born and raised in Denver. Born and raised in Denver, St. Joseph's Hospital. Um, That's awesome. Grew up on the east side for a little bit and then Montbello. Very cool. Montbello. Now who's this in the photo with you? Because you have two sisters. That's my little cousin Dion, to be quite honest oh. with you. And that's back east. My mom, both of my parents are immigrants. Uh-huh. Um, my mother from, from Guyana, oh. my father from the Congo. Um, my mother's family was all in, 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 in New York, you know what I mean? And along the uh, New York, DC area. 
And uh, that's my little cousin Dion. Like that's like 1987 or so something. So cute. Like that. You yeah. were wearing a tie. <laughs> <laughs> you see the polyester suit? That was it. <laughs> that was hot. It was a vibe. So here's the thing. When um, you have always been like a writer, yes. like, you know, uh, um, and so have you always been gifted with how you could tell stories? When did you know that you finally had, that you had this gift? I think, well, my oldest sister, who some may know, Joanne Reed was like the storyteller okay. in our family. Like I can remember, you know, being on vacations and she would dream up these elaborate stories that she, cause we grew up, you know, before the internet. Right? Uh -huh, so right. she'd come up with these elaborate tales that, <clears throat> that she would, you know, have me and my cousins and my other sister like riveted with. Right. And I think as the youngest in that troop, you had to sort of learn how to elbow your way right. through and, and be able to add to I the story. I got a story too. I got a story to tell too. <laughs> right, right, right. That my mom was really big on, we were like, let the baby talk. Oh, <laughs> I love <it. laughs> that's yeah, mom. Let's... <laughs> let, let the baby talk. She's right. got something to say. So it's like, um, that's when it started. And then shortly after her death, I think writing lyrics was something that I poured myself into. And that's kind of what my storytelling went in that direction, which okay. was, you know, just writing bars and wanting to be the greatest rapper of all time. So let's talk about that, because that's when I first met you, that's is right. you were best friends. You still are good friends with my ex. There you are right there. There he goes right there. There's uh, O2B. Eric Shaw. Yep, Eric Shaw is the one the white Jermaine hat. That was Jude. my ex. Uh-huh. Uh, me. And, and then, money. And money in the back. Yeah, Mike, is... didn't, Mike just actually hit me. Oh, uh, did a little he? bit ago, yeah, yeah, he's, for real. He's making a song for the Kathy J Show. Yeah, Mike Millennium. Uh, so I brought you something. It's your, it's an OTP oh, hat. Oh, <laughs> what? Since it was my ex boyfriend, I think you're I quoting <laughs> lyrics of mine. You're bringing <laughs> OTP hats. I watched you perform. When I say that I was always truly taken with your talent, it's a true statement. Thank you, you know, like I, you know, and here you are with the food chain. You actually, that was the group you went on to after O2P. That's right. You had success with the food chain. You guys toured. Yeah, yeah. we, we <clears throat> I mean, that was, that was a, a time in my life when I was just like, okay, this dreams really do happen thing really does happen. Yes. And we got to play South by Southwest a couple of times. Um, went on tour through, up and through the Northeast, like SOBs in New York. Yes. Brooklyn Bowl. Um, we're, we're san signed to Static Selector. <clears throat> so everything our, was looking good. Everything, was, everything looking was on the path. Right. And then? And then? Something happens. Denver happens. <laughs> right. I think in terms of hip hop, and I love where it's at now. Right. With the, you know, the APs and the Trev Riches and, and, and the generation now, there's, a, there's an actual consumer base in Denver. Yes, before there wasn't. Before yes. there wasn't. Right. So, so you know, right. you, you kind of get up against it. You're the opening guy of the band, and then, you know, it kind of pops and fizzles. You also were on sports radio, sports talk radio. Yeah. Shout out to the, when, when you were there. 104.3 The Fan. That's a, uh, the press box when we were my high sports radio. Yeah. Is that Pete? Peter? Yeah, that's Peter. Uh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. So how cool though. You did so good there. And you've had all so my point is you've had all these different avenues where you were like, maybe I'm gonna do this, maybe I'm gonna do this. Mm -hmm. But the medium was always still you talking, you yeah. expressing yourself. So as you're going through, you're not really realizing I mean you are really realizing whatever as long as you're expressing yourself, you're gonna be okay. That's right. Okay. And then you get into this horrible car accident and you kept the scar on your face. Why? <laughs> you know what? I wasn't wearing my seatbelt when it happened. Um, it was a very pivotal time in my life. I had just had my third um, child. Right. I didn't have the child. Right. Yeah. Thank you for pointing that out. Yeah. Don't ever take credit. <laughs> <laughs> so I had the child. Speeding home to you go see my, my baby right. um, and got into an accident on Lee still. Yeah. And when presented, you know, it was, it was about three... It's about a good three years for it to stop spitting out glass from the accident. You know, Whoa. they took it, they stitched it up, but they asked me if I wanted plastic surgery at the time. And, you know, we got a, a, a minor settlement. I was married at the time. Um, and between the wanting to remind myself how precious life is and, and, and to, to value every second of it. You kept the scar. I kept the scar. Wow. Is that in any of your lyrics anywhere? Yeah, it is. What is actually. it? What do you say about it? Um, Oh, you God. You think about it. You think about it. Okay, you think about it. It actually right. is in the song, though. So then you have a heartbreak. You move to L.A. Mm -hmm. Yes. Wait, you're in L.A. You're working on some films. Mm -hmm. Then this is where the big thing was. Um, you end up working on some films, mm -hmm. um, and then your father passes. That's right? right. And one of the most memorable things you've ever written is to your father, and you barely knew your father. That's right. T talk about that. You know, uh, you know, you grow up in a circumstance like that, single-parent home. 
Um, and, and mine was a little different because my dad wasn't across town or he was in another in the country. He was in another country. Right. My father was Congolese. And so from the moment that we kind of lost contact, which was I was probably about four until the day he passed, he was a, our relationship was over the phone. Right. And I always I never had animosity. I don't think toward, it just wasn't in me. You know, right. what I mean, both right. my older sisters were kind of like, you know, anti pops. I was more just kind of ambiguous okay in terms of you, you're there dude you know what i mean if you want to talk you know what i mean let's talk do you think that was because you were also a male and i you think were so too and thirsty for that, for that okay. you know what i mean that that male influence and you know dad there, and sons, there he goes pops yep. right there shout out to sebastian he's becky so, marcel and lomena i love that was yep. it cool on the phone when you talked to him it was and then times he would you know when, when i got older he he got to a point where he would allow me to get my to get my stuff off you okay. know what i mean so right. <clears throat> when i had feelings that I wanted to express about his absence, he was actually willing to listen. And his plan was always to get back to the States. I don't really know what, I think he might have been like, you know, a Jason Bourne type secret agent. His coming back to the States was always tougher than, you know I mean, it seemed like it, but he was also from the Congo, so it's pretty. When you different. write things, is, do you have a first draft? Do you, is, is everything just your first draft or do you have second, third, fourth drafts? Everything I mean, because I'm an MC, I think is a first draft and then it's, will it get to Oh, further for other people to hear development. It. Yeah, okay. because it's it, these things, they come to you. I think, you know, we're just conduits of the information that we get. I agree. And, and and they come to you, they they download and then the ego can decide to try and push it further yes. and decipher it. Or you can, you know, let, the, you know, give it to the gods is what I call it. Yes, you know pass I mean? it off it's to the gods. Pass it off to the gods and whatever's to come of it will. So that's usually like I, I've never gotten to the point yet. I don't think where it's first draft, second draft. Third. OK, wow. Yeah. See, that's talent. That's yeah. Right. You should see all the scratch paper in my house. OK. No, that's not right. That's, <laughs> that's not, not right. right. That, that's going to be the gods that said that. <laughs> okay. Well, when we come back after the break, Oren's going to explain to us how his world merged with Meow Wolf and what exactly Meow Wolf is. We'll be right back. Sure. <laughs> Kathy J. Oakwood Homes is an official partner of the Kathy J Show. Oakwood Homes, building happiness. Kathy J. Welcome back, everybody. So it's really funny how our lives take so many twists and turns. Yeah. Yes, and, and I'm so grateful that my guest Oren is in my life. As I said earlier, I love his perspective on things. So, Oren. Yes. I got three quick questions that I'm going to ask you. Okay, I just we'll want to know that. your perspective. Okay? okay. First one, you were raised by a single mom. That's you right. have two sisters. That's right. You have three daughters. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> I want to know <laughs> what you've learned about women over the years. There's your beautiful mom. Uh, you are the cradle of civilization. Um, everything that I have in this life, I owe to the women that raised me, um, including my daughters. And you know, while I don't think I've gotten it right in the relationship department, I think women teach you about the ultimate love that life has to offer is, is that you guys give unconditionally. You continue to. Yeah, in, I know. <laughs> I and know. And more. And then more. Um, <laughs> okay. You give advi uh, advice unsolicited. You That's, give everything. Yeah. Oh, no, we'll give you unsolicited <laughs> advice whenever you want it. Okay. Um, you, over the years, have now been practicing solitude. That's Tell that. everybody the importance of solitude. I think uh, 2020 should have taught us all that there is a, a you that is dying to get in touch with you yeah. and get to know yourself. Because if you don't, you can get um, shaken real quick, you know what I mean, off your, off your square. And with people being labeled non-essential workers and things like that, you know what I mean? We have a tendency, I think, to, in a Western way, pour ourselves into um, work. Uh -huh. And that's the goal of life is to work hard. That's and what retire. we're taught. That's yeah. what you're taught. And then what you don't realize is that, you know, there's far more during that work life that matters. And right. if you don't spend a lot of time with yourself, um, you're going to get shaken in times when you're forced to spend time with yourself. So meditate. You meditate. spend quiet time. I spend a lot of time meditating, you know what I mean? Whether that's physically working out or with your legs crossed. No, you look, you look fantastic. Thank you very that. much. Chip, oh, looking you good. Know what I'm okay, last one. This is my last question, then we're going to move on to Meow Wolf. So, okay. who should be our quarterback, Teddy Bridgewater or Drew Locke? Teddy Bridgewater only because when you take the two guys and you measure them against one another, they both had mediocre last year. Well, Teddy Bridgewater had like 16 touchdowns, 11 interceptions, but Drew Locke was like 13 and 12 or something like that. Um, there's two years versus a kid who's got five under his belt. And it's about time 
that uh, the reins were handed over to a capable black quarterback in Denver. Amen. There you go. Right. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, you so well. now let's talk about Meow Wolf. Yeah. So, yes, it opens to the public here in Denver, here mm -hmm. really soon, September 17th. That's right. So, it's an interactive way to experience art. Explain Meow Wolf to people. It's like if you took Disneyland uh, and you mashed it together with the Louvre. <laughs> okay, okay. Yeah, that's good. Just something like that. Okay. You know what I mean? It's right. like maximalist experiential art okay which is different than uh what's dominated the alt art world up until this point in time because it was usually pretty traditional uh -huh. go in stare at things behind glass um then there's the you know the ultimate alternative to that which is what's happening on the east side of denver with big murals and yes you know what i mean but you still can't climb up on no, the you murals. can't you can't touch them, you can't the, go in ill-advised yes to participate that's not how it works at meow wolf meow wolf is very experiential maximalist art it's that type of thing that you have to you have to be there to experience it yes. it's hard to explain to someone what meow wolf is if you don't go to it so santa fe was my first introduction um, I'm sure I'll be in the Vegas site, you know. Santa Fe is where Santa Fe is where you met the That's Mad right. Wolf people. That's right. You were down there doing a little uh, in your feelings. You were, you were with a shaman. <laughs> yeah, I was shamaning over a breakup. <laughs> but the universe pushed you right into your purpose. You Absolutely. met the people that connected you with Meow, Meow Wolf. That's right. They loved the story that you'd been working on. That's right. And now your story has been, continued to evolve over here like a Stanley multiverse universe. That's right. And Meow Wolf likes what you're writing. Yeah, the universe has a way of, you know, driving you towards your purpose. Um, I love what you what you said in your in your opening yeah. remarks because it's true. You know what I mean? And that's that is a picture of that's my life is a picture of that regardless of what I've tried to do to get away from it and steer myself <laughs> in all types of different directions right um, the universe has constantly been trying to push me toward um, where I'm at now you're not you author. know what I mean I'm an author I'm a writer um, I'm a storyteller and look at you smiling when you say that <laughs> it, it matters you, a lot right because do you have different confidence now that yes. you, than you did before validation means everything right it's yeah like if you're for just sure a guy throwing you know, footballs at your fence in your backyard. Are you really a quarterback? You're not a quarterback, are you right? Really? If you're just making songs <laughs> in the basement, no one hears them. Are you really? Are a you really a, a, a rapper? And that's right. not, I mean, I, I think external validation is important because of the constructs that we live. Yeah, in. I agree. And I so agree. that that for me, that nod, it's just kind of put the period at the end of the sentence for me, the writer. Right. I could tell that to anybody else. You know what I mean? And they probably would accept it. I'm a writer. And then you get hit with the question like, oh, have you written anything that I've written? He's like, well, not that kind of writer. That's a published writer. I'm a writer. writer. So you're a writer, writer. You are designing this whole multiverse yes. universe. Yes. Um, are you, this is part of what you showed us. Now, are you this whole backstories of all these characters, everything? Uh -huh. Are you going for something as big on a Marvel level, yes. Harry Potter level? Yes. Are you building that kind of universe? Yes. And Meow Wolf is taking a part of that. That's right. Okay. How to survive in the multiverse is um, our vehicle, our being mine and uh, my, my writing partner, Al, Aline Rodriguez. Um, we wrote a story about a six-year-old girl from Denver who becomes the Laura Croft of the multiverse. That's so awesome. Like, Don't say any more. Okay. X-Files meets Alice in Wonderland. That's right. There you go. Okay. So to see more of Oren's creations, you can follow him on Instagram. His handle, Oren Brian Lomana. That's right. Yes. You can also check out Meow Wolf here in Denver. It's going to be starting September 17th. Don't go anywhere. When we come back, we're going to... Uh, have Oren do some closing thoughts. I okay. can't wait. Okay, one more question for you when we come back. Yeah. Switching gears right now, it's time for the Colorado Lottery trivia question of the week. The question is, where do lottery dollars go to support the outdoors and schools? I'll tell you right after the quick break. Kathy J. The Colorado Lottery is an official partner of the Kathy J Show. Colorado Lottery, play on. All right, everybody, welcome back. Now, before the break, I asked you, where do lottery dollars go to support the outdoors in the schools? And the answer is all 64 counties across the state. That's right. All the money, uh, proceeds from the Colorado Lottery that you and I play goes to the outdoors and schools. It goes to baseball fields. It goes to um, everywhere throughout the state. Thank you so much. All right, so it's already time for the show to end. Boo! 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 
But I have to thank uh, my partners, Ramos Law, FitMD, the Colorado Lottery in Oakwood Homes. Thank you to Ikea Centennial for my beautiful set. And thank you so much, Oren. Thank you for coming to my show thank and being on today. Me, I have to give a shout out to your daughter, Africa, because right. she wasn't mentioned in the pictures, but I haven't That's seen her since girl. she's, I love her. That's my big girl. I'm gonna let you have the last word. Give us like a state of the world from a brighter perspective. Okay. Okay. I think that um, the last year and a half, year and eight, year, what, year and eight months, um, has taught us all um, a lot about the constructs that we've been living in yeah. and how frail those things are and how important it is, I think, that we find, you know, peace somewhere else. Uh-huh. So what I did was I poured myself into my writing and my writing is very fictional. It's very pretend. It's very make-believe and it reminds me of the world that I used to build for myself. So find your outlet. That's what he's trying to say. For sure. And find Oren on social media. Thank you guys for supporting Audio the Kathy J Show. Say goodbye. Say goodbye. <laughs>